Today I'd like to discuss uh, using automation inside of Cubase 7.5. Uh, I've already done some automation uh, so you can see how this works. Um, let me go ahead and play from here. At this point, automation is, is, should be switching these guitar tracks uh, further left and right in the, in the um, space <laughs> what automation can do for you. Now, how do I get to, to make these kind of uh, changes inside of QA 7.5? Well, let's go ahead and go through just one track and we're going to change the parameters. We're not going to use uh, the value or the uh, panning. We're going to try it with value. So let's go ahead and start basically from scratch here. Alright, so you select the track that you want to uh, do the automation on. Let's just say that we want this to fade up. That is, the volume will go from zero to some parameter, so the guitar kind of fades up into the mix. All right, so you selected your track, and you go ahead and click this, and in this track, if you go toward the left of that, when this window here, you'll find a little arrow that seems to be hidden. Go ahead and click that. All right. Now, you should have basically three, uh, two squares and a kind of a rectangle that should have some words inside of it. If you've never messed with this particular uh, window, it will probably be volume, okay? But if it's not, you can just go ahead and left click it, excuse me, uh, yeah, left click it and select a parameter. You can see there's several parameters here in which you can automate. Okay, and you can automate the EQ, uh, you can automate the sends and the inserts, the pans, just a whole slew of, of uh, parameters which you can automate. Uh, we're going to automate the volume. Okay, so what do I do? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to click the W and it will turn red and the R will turn green, indicating that you are going to be writing. W for write, R for read, okay? It's gonna indicate that you are gonna be writing a change or, or some sort of uh, change, yeah, well, change for, for the automation, okay. So, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna select the pencil tool. If you want to get that to come up, basically you just, inside that particular track, you go ahead and right click and it will pull up a little window. And I'm going to go ahead and select the draw tool. And what I want to do is, and this is something that, uh, it's a little tricky, but it's not all that tricky. Let us back up a few steps. Let's go back to the object select. Okay. And we're going to move the, um, I want to, I usually call it a cursor, but it's actually called a locator line. Okay, so you can move the locator line to where you want to make the first change. You put a dot on the left side of it, and one on the right side. And then you go ahead and bring over your locator and do the same thing. Put one on the left side and one on the right side. All right. So, this is where you want your parameter to change, or start to change. To the left of, that, of this locator, uh, you don't want change, so you've got a dot there. Now, go ahead and select this dot, and move it somewhere else. Now, go back to your other end parameter, and you'll see that you've got one here, and one there. Inside these, param inside these uh, points will be a change. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. 
Now you notice that I've made it silent, but you can... Okay? Let's go ahead and undo those. All right. Now, you're asking why I did that. Did it the way I did it, okay? When you use your, your locator bar, uh, this is where you want the changes to begin. Now, this is in volume that's fairly easy to determine. Um, however, with things like pan or say you just want an EQ to change in, in just one measure or one beat, you want to have a point where before this locator it remains the same and after this locator it changes and then where does that change stop? Say it's here and here's where you begin and Here's where it ends. Let's go ahead and do that with something, something else. So let's go ahead and uh, do this with, say, Amplitube. Now, uh, at this point, Amplitube is, shouldn't be set up for accepting changes. Let's go ahead and test it and make sure. Oh, yep, I've already written the automation. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this. Now, in Amplitude, the automation parameters are not already set up. I've set them up at this point. But what you're going to do is, for each parameter you want to change, you're going to have to click the knob. Say, on this particular amplifier, you're going to click the gain with a right click. And it says, Assign Automation this point it tells you it's the gain and that's exactly the knob that you that you clicked and you're going to select a parameter say we're going to select parameter 12 okay now I've already done this with uh, the wah pedal as you can see I selected as parameter 1 for the wah and the mode as parameter 2 and the bypass on my distortion pedal well it's an overscreen pedal which is basically a distortion pedal uh, as parameter 3 Okay, now uh, I'm going to set a point, say just before measure three, and I'm going to put a point right there. I'm going to move my uh, well. I've, I've, I've done something that I, I skipped a step here. Let's go ahead and go back a step or two. Every now and then I do that. <laughs> you have to forgive me. All right. So let's go ahead and select Amplitude as we're going we're gonna to first change, make changes the parameters on the wah pedal. Okay. Now, uh, I just want this to... Say I just want the wall to occur between, say, measures 3 and measures 11. Okay, so I've selected it. So, uh, let's go ahead and click that before measure 3 and then one right after measure 3. And I'm, once again, I'm using the pencil tool, okay? Let's move to select and select measure 11, and I'm going to select the draw tool again. I'm going to put a dot right before measure 11 and one right after measure 11. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw in some wah movement. Now it is much easier to actually go ahead and play the wah, so to speak. I'm just going to do this to show you um, some changes.
Okay. So let's go ahead and play this. You see that there is some changes going on. Let's go ahead and look at the actual wah and play this so you can see the wah moving. All right. Well, you know, let's actually uh, start it where the parameter began, right? Of course. All right. Let's try. draw these these parameter changes in. Now let's go ahead and undo it and I'm going to show you that it doesn't just have to be done with the pencil tool as far as these changes on the wah or for that matter any parameter that you choose to change. Alright, so we know we're going to be changing parameter one which is the wah pedal. Make sure that's correct. All right. I guess I got a few more walls I need to, to undo here. All right. So let's do it between three and eleven. All right. Go ahead and hit play. <laughs> So what was I doing? Well, basically I, I put my, uh, I held the left click on my mouse and just basically moved the mouse with the wah pedal. All right. So let's go ahead and write that. Okay, this time it will actually write the parameter changes. Now that you know how to do it, let's go ahead and do it. As you can see, it wrote some parameter changes for the wah. Let's go ahead and play those back. And you can see the wah. And that's, that's the same process that works with all these parameters once you've selected them. Okay? So, let's go ahead and undo those. Now, I've talked to you about how to write inside of the project window, which I think is the easiest way to do it, and also is the best way to do it in the sense that you can see what changes have been made. Now, if in fact, that you, if in fact you happen to have a MIDI hardware controller, uh, you could probably use efficiently I say efficiently in a sense that it's uh, if less efficient than using the, the mouse and the uh, project window, but you can, in fact, do changes on the, in the, um, in the, in the mixer window. Let's go ahead and close this. Now, the changes, you, how you can do this is, is pretty much the same principle that you're going to write. W, the changes with, this, in this case, we'll use the, the fader. All right, let's go ahead and uh, hit play.
However, and this is where my problem with writing with the faders in the mix window uh, comes into play. Uh, I have a problem with uh, the way these kind of things look. Um, in this instance, you've got a lot of little dots here for those moves, okay? Uh, when you draw those in, you have basically, for each move, maybe two or three dots. Each of these dots takes some toll on your processing, okay? And it's not very smooth, I don't think. Um, but you can write from the mixer's window, okay? And if you have a, a hardware controller, uh, something like a Novation Zero SL MK2, which I have one of those, and I occasionally use it, uh, they tend to create all this, which, as I found out through my own experience, it, it does take some toll on the, on the processing power. Um, not a lot, but if you do this on every track, it really starts to build up fast. And the other part is, it's just not very efficient to me. Uh, I can look at this and tell where I want things to change as I listen. Um, <laughs> For instance, here, you know, I know for sure that I don't want that, you know, so I can go ahead and take out these. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Now, once again, you can actually go ahead and do it for the mix one and go back and edit each of these, but it takes time. All right? Uh, I think uh, that you guys should go ahead and take some, some time and, and go through using automation inside of Cubase 7.5. It will um, help you add movement into your song. Um, for instance, as, as I demonstrated with the wah pedal and the, the distortion, is that those kind of things can add a more realistic feel to what you're doing um, without having to commit when you're writing to something that you may or may not like. Uh, just a basic guitar track without any plugins. Uh, at some point later, you've got the notes, you've got the chords, uh, but the color of it, say, I don't like the amp, you can change that later. Or I, I used a wah and I probably shouldn't have. Well, if you didn't use a wah to begin with, you can actually add one later using automation. It gives you more options at a later point. Now, some people will claim that that's not the way to go, although I think that's the best way to go because uh, I may record something, say, in 2010, and it was a great idea then, but I liked the song, but I didn't like the color of the amp, it was too heavy, it was too light, I used a wah, and it doesn't need a wah. Those kind of things I can change, and the song still has some credibility in 2014 or 15. All right, this has been Grandpa Lance at Grandpa Lance's blog. I hope this has been helpful. Okay.